How many people are excited to be there this evening? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we take our seats, I would like you to help me appreciate the man of God and the woman of God in the house. Praise the Lord. I'm here this evening and um, I'm not about to teach us any these things. I'm sure you've heard enough. Amen. And just, you know, just to add a little that uh, I know to what you've been taught and I believe the Spirit of God is going to be helping us this evening. Hallelujah. Amen. Man of God, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I don't take this platform for granted. Please put your hands together once again. Hallelujah. And then it's Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you really sure you're excited to be here this evening? I'm sure the Spirit of God is going to be helping us. Before I go on, I'm here with a few people. I'll quickly uh, do an introduction. I'm here with uh, uh, my personal assistant and the person of GJ Lutzine. Can you please be friends here for me? Praise God. I'm also here with a uh, sister, Lara. She's somewhere around. Amen. And of course, I'm also here with my family. My wife is here. Praise God. Please help me appreciate that. Amen. Hallelujah. We've been married for just a while. Amen. November this year is going to be level here. Amen. Hallelujah. I still remember when I wanted to propose to her years ago when we were on campus. All of this year, I'm university. That's what they call it now. Or all you. It used to be Oko State University. Praise the Lord. That was uh, 996. Uh, it was just shortly after morning devotion, very early morning. You don't want to try my style, amen? <laughs> and um, uh, when I felt that this is God saying, it's time to move, I just moved right away. I was on my bedroom slippers, I was wearing a shirt, and uh, I just went ahead and asked, and did what God asked me to do, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please let me appreciate that once again. It's been a wonderful moment. Uh, this is a wonderful topic we're looking at. I'm sure uh, everybody uh, has this topic on their mind at one point or the other. Amen. Psychologists have concluded that uh, guys think about sex or related issues 95% of the time. No matter how holy you are. Amen, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know, you know, I know there are some holy guys here. Yeah. Amen. How many of us are holy here? Well, how many of us also know that sex is holy? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. God created sex. Whether you want to agree to that or not, God created sex. I'm also aware that we have married people here and singles here, so I'm going to quickly go ahead and speak uh, to the married folks while the singles block their ears. Amen and wait for their tongue. Hallelujah. Uh, sex, it's a powerful stop. Um, our days, our week, our month is always filled with a lot of uh, activities, some of them mundane things. And into this world, God has dropped something fabulous for us. For those of us that are married anyway, amen, that um, you can always get back home and then relax and make love with your wife. Hallelujah. And that goes a long way. You know, years ago I was teaching somewhere and uh, a guy, obviously single, came around and said, uh, there's nothing he doesn't know about this sex we, we are talking about. He knows everything. In fact, it's not even a day, but it's more experienced than people. And I said, well, you are missing it here. Because when you look at the Bible, each time somebody commits fornication or has sex outside the marital sanctity, you always see these words used, and he laid with him, I, I, I laid with her. Have you seen that before? He laid with her. But when it was, you know, uh, within the context of marriage, the Bible talks about, we talk about uh, statement like, and Adam knew his wife. So you see, this thing is different. Are you here with me? So let me ask somebody around you, are you laying or knowing? <laughs> what did your neighbor say? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And somebody asked my ask, why do we need a teach sex? You see, the marriage bed is an accurate picture of what else is going on in the marriage. If the marriage is good, okay, the bedroom will be heated up. But if the, if, the, if the marriage is not good, of course, the matrimonial bed will be very cold. So, in a way, our sex life is an indication of what is going on in the marriage. It overflows, it's intertwined. Hello, somebody. Now, sex can be beautiful. Sex is beautiful. And if you look at the Bible, the Bible has a lot to say about sex. Praise the Lord. Um, Proverbs chapter 5, let's, let's look at that scripture very quickly. Proverbs chapter 5, we we'll look at a few verses there. Uh, verse 15, the Bible says, Drink waters out of thy own cistern, and running waters out of thy own well. And what this is talking about, is talking to married people, hello, that if you want to drink water, please do it from your own well, out of your own cistern. Don't look at someone else's cistern. Hello. And um, the Bible is likely sex here to drink water. How often do you drink water? Hello. All right, look at verse 16. It says, Let the fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of water in the streets. Verse 17. Let them be only thy own and not strangers with thee. And that verse is telling us we are not supposed to go into extramarital, adulterous relationships, and all that. And then um, verse 18. Let the fountain be blessed. Rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind, the pleasant room. Let her breasts satisfy thee at all times. Don't say the word breast in the Bible. Oh, yes, it's there. Let go. Let her breasts satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. Uh, verses 16 and 19, another translation says, Be happy with the wife you married when you were young. She's beautiful and graceful, just like the dead. You should be attracted to her and stay deeply in love. Okay, uh, so what this scripture is telling us is that it is not a sin if you're married to pause and gaze at your wife and admire her and appreciate her beauty and talk to her about how you love her body. Hello, somebody. If you are single and you do that, that's confusion. <laughs> because you see, when you go into sex or sexual relationship outside marriage, your soul enters into confusion. Why? Because you have violated the principles of God. God knows what he's doing and what he's saying when he says stay, you know, uh, uh, stay out of sex, outside marriage. Okay, I'm going to tell us a few things um, for those of us that are married. Number one, um, very few points. Men are proactive while women are reactive when it comes to sex. I'm talking to married people, okay? Men are proactive. Women are reactive. A lot of uh, husbands you know, are bothered about the fact that I don't understand why my wife doesn't make a move when it comes to sexual relationship. She's always, always waiting for me all of the time for me to make a move. But you see, 20 years of research confirms that for many women, desire is triggered by thoughts and emotions arising during sexual intercourse, not before. I know somebody. During, not before. So most of the time, they're like, you never make a move. But once I make a move, you're, you're always ready. That's the way a woman has been wired. And that should not bother you in any way. So men are proactive. But women are reactive. Women don't easily uh, initiate sexual advances in that sense of it. But it's after marriage, after many years, or sometimes a few years in, in, in some couples, the, the, all the inhibi inhibitions that the lady has has gone, and then she begins to you know, uh, come up with that. You see, when it comes to sex within marriage, it's an art that has to be learned. Are you here with me? Yeah. It's something that develops over the years. It's, it, uh, it, it, it needs a lot of practice before you get to it and then you get uh, at it. The second thing I want to mention is that you need to understand that there are different kinds of sex. Again, I'm talking to married people. I need to keep on reminding us. Hello. There are different kinds of sex. And uh, uh, it's not all of the time we have what uh, I would refer to as perfect sex. In the real sense of it, in which all the fireworks are complete. Hello. All the thunders and the lightning and the earthquake. Hello, somebody. 
We have that some of the time, but it's not all the time that that has to be. So there is a perfect set, then there is, there is uh, what I would call a quickie, which is just to fit the need of the moment. Hello, somebody. Again, I'm talking to married people. <laughs> the way singles are very attentive. Like, I'm saying, it's a And then, of course, there's functional sex, uh, which is uh, uh, some of the time when the man is down, emotionally down, when there's something troubling him. Okay? Um, it, it, it is not really a time when sex is wanted, but sex is needed at that point in time. So functional says, I'm not in the mood, but my spouse needs me right now, okay? And then, you know, we go for it. Uh, the Bible makes us to understand that it is, it's your spiritual duty to give yourself to each other daily as often as required. If you look at that drama going on, oh, what the lady was doing was wrong. Hello? Uh, the way the guy was vibrating, <laughs> it's a prototype of what any man could do when you are sexually starved. A sexually starved man, married man, can do anything. Hello, somebody. It's not wise. Because uh, if, if it's an unbeliever, he goes out and then he starts looking for another little outside and finds other avenues to just express himself. And then that's how extramarital begins and then I do trust relationships and all of that. So for a woman, the Bible says it's a spiritual deed. And when you look at what the Bible says, it says, defraud ye not one another. So the Bible says, when your spouse asks for sex and you say no, what you are doing is like defrauding him or her, that is uh, called the fraud, criminal act. That's what God says, it's a fraud. As a matter of fact, when you say you are fasting without the permission of your spouse, hello, God will not answer your prayers. God respects that much, okay? So uh, that's the Paul advice. said, before you go into fast, make sure you sit down and agree. Okay, we're going to fast for this long. We're going to stay out, out, out of sex for this long. So that makes a lot of difference. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, again, uh, we have uh, what I call comfort sex, in which uh, when life has brought devastation and the only comfort and security is to be found in the arms of your spouse. When you find your spouse in a very low air, but a very low air, you offer sex. And you see, he's going to do a lot of wonders. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at the next thing. Uh, let's look at three. What happens immediately after sex to a woman is very important. Or what you do to a woman. Or what you do around a woman immediately after sex is very important. Um, you need to understand that um, your bodies have been working at an increased heart pace. Okay? And uh, immediately after the sexual act, that is the wrongest time for you to you know, roll over to the other side and just sleep off or stand up like incredible up looking at yourself in the mirror and man, I'm too much. You know? That is the time your wife probably needs an embrace, gaze into her eyes or his eyes and then you know, just salvo that moment. Praise the Lord. Just salvo that moment. All right, the next thing I want to talk about and, um, uh, is that you need to sexually pursue your wife outside the bedroom. Outside the bedroom. Good sex is an all day affair. You can't be having an attitude to your spouse and then expect her to give you a best when it comes to bedtime and that. You understand what I'm talking about? Sometimes sex starts in the kitchen in the morning, a compliment here and there helping her to do one or two things is going to go a long way. A lot of couples complain about you know, frigidity and all of that, but they are just little, little things that should be handled and that wouldn't be there. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Are you still here with me? Yes. Okay, so uh, sometimes we this is difficult for men to understand because uh, the way we see sex is different from the woman sees it. A woman, for example, is not ready for sex at an instant. And she loves you. It's not that she doesn't love you. But for a man, less than five seconds, is ready. That's the way it's been wired. But it's different from a woman. So, you know, it's not the way they, you know, some people do it in the olden days. And the mama's in the like, come here. You put your dress, lie down. No, you don't do that now. Praise the Lord. So you need to sexually pursue your wife outside the bedroom, okay? 
When you improve your marriage, you will usually improve your sex life. And when you improve your sex life, you will improve the rest.